Hallo, goedenavond iedereen. Uh, mijn naam is Bo en straks spreek ik met uh, Pascal Brega, de regisseur van Aurora, de film die jullie net hebben gezien. Aurora belt ons vanuit uh, Costa Rica. En dankzij de wonderwereld van het internet kunnen we nu met haar praten, nu, dat het, uh, nu we haar niet live kunnen zien. Uh, ik hoop dat we snel weer over films kunnen praten, buiten aan de cinema of op café, maar uh, voorlopig doen we het even zo. Um, hi Pas, um, welcome to Move Film Festival. I'm very happy we can talk uh, about your film. I really like the movie. I think it's a very warm and understanding portrait of two women who are in a very confusing time uh, in their lives. Um, as we all know, we meet uh, Juliana um, when she tries to evoke an abortion by, by taking some pills. And we soon learn that she's in the 21st week of her pregnancy um, and that abortion is illegal in um, Costa Rica. Could you tell us something more about this uh, situation and how abortion is looked upon in Costa Rica? I think we um, we're sort of very far from it becoming uh, legal or accepted in any way. There, there was actually a law passed. I think it was last year or maybe the year before that um, that sets up sort of the protocol for having an abortion when the mother's life is in danger or when the pregnancy is not viable up until a couple of years ago, even this was a bit difficult. Sometimes the baby was had died in the womb and the woman would be denied an abortion. Mm -hmm. So she had to carry the pregnancy to term, even though the baby was dead or um, other complicated circumstances. So yes, it's, it's very complicated. And the, um, the way it's portrayed in the film uh, has something to do with the way some abortions happen, which is that um, sort of organizations that have to do with women's health, they sort of um, oversee somewhat safer abortions, clandestine abortions. So it's sort of like something some women know about, but I think it's more like middle-class women that know about these kinds of places. Mm. Um, it's not so so widely used yeah yeah and i think right now i think right now there's not even any of these i mean it's like at times one of them comes up and then it gets found out by the authorities and investigated and it stops and then so from time to time there is something like the kind of thing you see in the film like a doctor that will see you in a place that's that's known as safe but um like right now i don't think there's anything like that Mm -hmm. I feel like the um, the film is as much about um, people who um, are uh, who can't have children and people who have unwanted pregnancies. Um, yeah. uh, I, I was wondering what what made you decide to make a, a film about this subject. I, I think the film. It's funny. It's it's not about. It's not exactly about motherhood. It's more about the idea of motherhood, no? It's kind of like what comes before. It's about what it's what it means for a woman to decide to have children or not. And I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm a little bit like uh, amazed that we are like in the situation now where it's so hard for a woman to find the right time to be a mother because it's like when you're too young, you're not supposed to. But then also comes like a time when you're very productive and it doesn't seem to fit in with anything. And supposedly there's like a perfect time to do it, but often this is like too late for biological reasons. So I don't know, it just seems to me like a very cruel thing that, um, that society doesn't seem to put that, I mean, in all this, there doesn't seem to be so much attention to like a woman's desire, you know, that it's like, you might desire children at the wrong time. And I really think that even 
this is like so strong, the way we have to sort of like make our desire go with the way things are in the world and the way things are in the world, I don't think are that great for women um, and even worse for mothers probably. So, um, so even, even for us, it's like really hard to, to get in touch with like, with like, what, what do I desire when I desire to have children? Like that for me is like a very interesting question. I mean, both for men and women, but I think for, for women, it's like even more weighed down by sort of like practical considerations. Like many women I speak to that decide not to have children. It's not that they don't want the children. They don't want everything else that comes with it. No. And it's different to be a mother in different parts of the world. And this is something that is not so often talked about how, how important it is to feel free in this decision. Mm -hmm. Like supposedly, if you have an education and you can sort of like work and be independent, you're free, but you're, you're not really free when it comes to having kids. No. No, and I also feel like this this movie is is about how the the two women interact with each other. They they meet each other at a very weird time in their lives. Um, and when I was watching the film, I was I started to wonder who needs whom the most in in this yeah. friendship and in this yeah. relationship. Um, it's clear that that Juliana needs shelter and understanding and. Um, someone to rely on because she wants to hide her pregnancy from her parents and her friends. Mm -hmm. But I, I was wondering, what's in it for Louisa? Why, why is she doing this? Is, is it just because she wants to be a good Samaritan and she wants to help out a younger girl? Or, or is it, what's, what's in it for her? Yeah, well, I think it's a way, it's a way to, to have I think it's a way to be a mother. I don't think Luisa um, is someone who made like a clear decision not to be a mother. It just didn't mm -hmm. happen. And I think, I think we mother like so many people in our lives, no? Like we, sometimes like we, we sort of like parent our parents or we parent our brothers and sisters or there's always like a friend, you know, that we sort of, take care of and um, yeah I think I think Luisa there's something about taking care of this girl that and and also about being close to someone that is in the process of becoming a mother that is very interesting for her and uh, I don't know it it feels like at times what Juliana is proposing is kind of like the possibility of a family of a strange sort mm -hmm. of family but a family yeah yeah oh this special connection this yeah yeah i understand but uh, luisa also talks about um, at some point in the film she talks about the different roles that we play and the different hats we put on mm -hmm. um and uh, at the same time she tries to be a friend and some sort of mother uh, for iliana um but she also talks about how underneath those hats and those layers there's some kind of void that is yourself and that you have to fill. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that she tries to do by, by taking care of Juliana? Is, is there something she tries to work out for herself? I think so, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I just think, I, I mean, I look around me and I think we're all so incredibly complex and our needs are so incredibly complex. And it feels more and more that, mm, you know, getting by in this world uh, means that we sort of have to squish down like that complexity and we have to like canalize it through like certain ways of, of doing things that, you know, might seem fulfilling for people like having a, having a job or having a family or connecting with others or having intimacy or having like mi meaningful uh meaningful work meaningful relationships and i think we are like very limited i mean i think this is like a time when we are as limited as we've ever been i mean i'm not a 
not a historian, so maybe there have been other times that are, were more rigid, but it seems to me like when I, when I look at how things were, even in my grandparents' generation, people were sort of like more open to, yeah, to playing different roles for each other. So it seems like, um, I don't know, for some reason we've become more open in a way, but at the same time, it's like things are still very straight and narrow. At least maybe that's the way it feels here in Costa Rica. Maybe it's not like that everywhere, but there's, there are like very clear ideals. I think the, the nuclear family is like a very limiting thing because I think when, when families were sort of bigger, um, there were like many, you know, like sometimes aunts and uncles were like parents, sometimes grandparents were like parents sometimes, and people sort of like moved around in these roles for each other. And in communities, people did this as well, no? So people that didn't, neighbors and friends and, um, and I think at least it, it feels to me right now that um, people are sort of like very, very self-centered and very, like they put a lot of faith in, in limiting things, no? So it's like, I have to set the limits between me and the other one and, and what, and, and, and it's like defining things will help us. And I, and I, I don't find it, it helps so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it kind of makes us like all the time be searching for things to look a certain way and, and, and closes us off to other possibilities that are sort of all around us. Yeah, so is, is this film about a woman who, um, or about women who try on different hats and try on different roles? And for example, Luisa, she, she doesn't want to be the, the architect and the, or maybe she wants to be and the architect and the teacher, but also someone else, someone different for Juliana. Yeah. Well, the, the, the fact that she does sort of like many different things um, is something like almost everyone I know has like, you know, like three, four different lives. Like mm -hmm. they have a job that they do for money. They have a job that they really love. They have this other extra thing that they used to do, but sometimes they go back to and they have like something they want to be in the future. And I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is a, this is necessarily a, a bad thing. Um, I think it's, it's kind of interesting, the kind of people it makes us become, you know? So. Yeah, we are always way, way more than, than the hat we put on that day, so. Yeah, it, yeah, we have like not, so many. Yeah, I uh, really like how you uh, portray these women in the film and they, like I said, it's very empathic and understanding and warm, but also the camera stays very close to their faces, especially mm -hmm. in the scenes with Juliana, even if she's in a crowd, we always stay close to her face. Um, um, is it something you, you try to achieve? Or? I don't know why, I don't, it wasn't like something we, we set out to do. A lot of the time we were shooting in places that were kind of small, so, so that has something, it wasn't easy to get sort of like wider shots. And I guess, yeah, because um, I've become sort of like more and more and more sort of interested in, well, this is the first film that I make that is not in, in a landscape. Like I'm always shooting in, in nature and this is the first time I'm shooting more in the city and in closed spaces. Um, so I think it, the, the most interesting for me thing for me was sort of like these two actresses. It's also lucky in a way, we, we shot this way before the pandemic, but thinking that everything's going to be seen on a small screen, um, I think it, it works for this kind of very close, I mean, if it was in a cinema, I, sometimes I have that feeling, you know, like when you're in a cinema and you see those close-ups, they sort of like, uh, I like them better in, in smaller screens and in bigger screens, I like wider shots better. So. In that sense, we, we it's kind of good that <laughs> people are going to watch it on their computers and you yeah, know, it feels very intimate to watch these scenes with the, with the two women. And I was also wondering, um, this film is about a very specific friendship and relationship between two women. Is it something you try to 
uh, look for in your other films? I was wondering how does this film fit in with your other work? With other ones? Um, I don't think the other ones are so much about, no, they're not about relationships between women. Um, I mean, the first one is like an encounter between two, but I don't think they really relate to each other. I think they're more like a mirror. I mean, like the little, um, this little girl that the, the main character runs into is kind of like a mirror for her that brings up something. But um, this one, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I do have like a, a, th a thought <laughs> about this whole thing to do with, um, with parenting and specifically what it's like for, for a woman to decide whether she wants to be a mother or not. And I, I do feel, I mean, it was like a very difficult decision for me. It was something I wanted very much, but it's, it's very, very difficult to be a filmmaker and a mother. Almost, almost impossible, I would say. May, many women do it, but it is sort of like, it, it, it feels like there's not enough, it, it feels like it doesn't quite work out. I think it's, it's like a very, and I, I guess women in other jobs have this as well, but it's, a, it's very intense work. It's work that used to be for men who weren't looking after their families mm -hmm. and, you know, and still is mostly, you know, men that aren't so involved in their families. That's kind of the way it works. It's very hard to be involved with a family. And, um, and I do think that there is, that relationships between women are sort of like the way forward right now. That's more like a, like a political thought, but I think that as much as we have to fight for equality, we also have to find like the ways that, that like this patri pat patriarchy, how do you say in English? But yeah, like the way the world is, has made it hard for us to see that sometimes like other women are sort of like the way to mm, to have the, the the kind of life that we want. Like I've, I've found this in time that it's often like, um, like the way that we are in the world right now between men and women is so difficult that as much as we have to fight for equality, we also have to sort of like, um like the 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 best way to find strength and to be able to have you know to be in the world the way we want as women i think is to be together with other women mm -hmm. yeah i i um i really thought that in this film the uh, the women are supporting each other in a way that seems very natural and normal and just the thing they do without yeah. think really uh thinking about it um and also the uh, Juliana's mother, she's very afraid to tell her mother that she's pregnant. But even when this happens, the mother is understanding. It's, it's not like she's yeah. a, the, a the evil mother, a, mo a monster. Um, and then she takes over the care. I really liked how all the, the women in, in this film were very nuanced. Um, I, I thought it was very, very nice uh, to see. Um, but I was... I read that all the actors were unprofessional actors. Is this true? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not all, no. There there are some professional actors. Uh, the main the main characters are are not professional ah. actors. But Juliana's mother is a professional actress, mm -hmm. and her her stepfather also, and some of the other actors. Yes. Yes, but the the main the main, the main actors one. are. Yeah, and yeah. Wh why did you choose to work for uh, with non-professional actors for the main characters? Yeah, well, I think I think that the way I wanted to make this film, and I think that the way I, I really like to work with films is like I sort of have like an open... Well, I, I think that usually we make films to say things that we can't write, we can't say, you know? So it's like if you have a statement, that doesn't make a film, right? Uh, films are usually about things that are like more complex and they're sort of like brewing in your mind and they're things that you see and you put together, but you don't know exactly what conclusion, you know, you don't have like a firm conclusion. So 
because I like to make films in this open way, um, like the most interesting way to go about it for me is to start to talk to people about their lives, you know? So um, what I did with this one was that, well, when, when Raquel, who's the actress who plays Juliana, when she was pregnant, she had a baby at 17 and during her pregnancy, I approached her and we started talking and that came into the script and into the idea for the film. And then I started looking for a woman that had like a, like a complicated relationship with the decision to have kids or not. And that's when I found Rebecca, who's like a very, very smart, very sensitive, very interesting woman. And, and she was sort of like open to talking about this. Um, and this way it was kind of like an investigation for the three of us, you know, I think like a lot of the things that happen in the film, it's like they could really sort of like invest themselves into imagine this is almost like living it, you know, because it was something that was interesting to them. Like, I think for Rebecca, it was interesting to think about, um, whether she wanted to be a mother or not and whether she wanted to be close to kids and to raising kids and all this. And uh, for, for Raquel, I think it was also kind of really, for Raquel something really interesting happened, which is that um, when she had her baby, I think it was like very lonely for her. Um, but in this film, she was like very much with other people. She was with Luisa. I mean, her character was, no? And she had like this group of friends and everything. And I think it was like almost like, like she went through this again, but in this different way. And it made her feel yeah. like much more like empowered, no? As like, I'm, like, yeah, like I'm really young and I'm a mother, but that doesn't mean I'm sort of like a disaster or like this is my life planned out. And I think it, it was like really good for her in that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's very interesting that you say uh, a statement doesn't make a movie. I think it's true. Um, and I also find it very interesting that in the movie, a lot of things remain unsaid. Uh, we, we don't know why she, she wants to have a pregnancy or you know, we can guess why, but um, yeah. it, it's never really spoken about. Um, we don't know when or how... Um, uh, she got pregnant, who the father is. Again, we can guess and we can uh, yeah. make some assumptions. Um, why Why did you want to tell the story in this way, in this more abstract, not very concrete yeah. or implicit way? Yeah. Hmm, why? It's funny because there, there were scenes where things were talked about. Um, like I... I I, I sort of like with this film, I experimented a little bit with like making things clearer, you know, and sort of like being more direct with some of the information. And some of it got left in, but some of it I didn't, I don't know, I have a feeling like when you're not so focused on the information and you sort of like experience the film more like the way you experience life or you're sort of like picking up information from, I mean, in, in life, a lot of the situations that you work out, you don't have the information directly, you know? Mm -hmm. Even with the people we are closest to, I think like a lot of the time what they say isn't what's really happening. And we know that all the time, you no? Know? All the time we're sort of like making this dis distinction between things that people say, but all the little things we gather from what they do, from what's going on, from... And I sort of feel it's more interesting to experience a film in this way and to mm -hmm. also allow yourself not to know everything. No, it's like, you don't know everything, but um, you do know some things. And, and I wanted it to be like more focused on sort of like the way they were with each other more than on the information and the, the things that happen. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true that the film is more about their relationship or at least as was I, that, that's what I felt when I was watching it. It's more about the relationship and how they, they act and how they just try to plan their future mm -hmm. and, and try to figure out what to do. 
Um, and as the viewer also make some assumptions as you would do when you're in this situation, what has happened, I don't really know, but I think it's this or that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because we don't know everything, maybe we can watch them more closely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, one last thing. Um, in the film, Louisa talks about how she finds beauty in things that aren't finished yet. Uh, a drawing that's not yet a, a, a complete artwork or architecture plans or buildings still in the racks. Um, is this something, is this a feeling or uh, that you that you recognize and does it influence the way you watch films or you make films? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, um, I think it's something about being, um, attracted to things that sort of like don't aren't yeah that aren't finished like never to see yourself as like a finished person or you know everything is always like more about like asking yourself what it is that's going on what it is that you're seeing is this like the way to do things is this the way to live and to always be sort of like paying attention and and imagining also no like it like I think imagination in in this in the issue that the film is about which is deciding whether or not to be a mother um i think imagination should play like a much more important role for women than it does i think we often don't don't feel sort of like even free enough to try to sort of like create a different kind of life um and we feel like conditions are sort of like very much set down for us. And I think if, if we were sort of, yeah, sort of like more comfortable with not knowing and a little bit braver and a little bit more imaginative and more caring, at the end of the day, things would really be okay, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we would have sort of like interesting different ways of, of living our lives um, that maybe are a little bit softer for for women. I think like like the way the world is right now is is very harsh. Mm -hmm. It's it's something Louisa says to the children. She teaches them. Um, um, we create a censorship for ourselves very early on in our lives, and yeah. when we think if we I won't be able to do it, so I won't even try it. When the yeah. children are trying to draw something and. Maybe that that's an in, that's a nice thing to remember that maybe we should allow ourselves to imagine more hats to try on and more lives to live. Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe we can work it out if if we want to, if we try to. And also because I mean we're so focused on sort of like getting our lives to look a certain way. You no, know? like it feels like there's a bunch of things that you have to have. Um, for for life to work out ultimately and i think it's it it makes a lot of us like very sad not to have these things or sometimes when you finally have them they're not what you thought they were they don't make you as happy as you thought and ultimately i think it's not as important for our lives to have that particular shape but it's more to sort of like go through life paying attention to the people around us being more loving to whoever is there you know, and it's like, if, if you do that, like life usually works out to be pretty amazing, you no? Know? And, um, and it, yeah, it, it just seems like, like right now, that's a little bit forgotten, even if it seems like a very obvious thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Presentation. It was very inspiring for me. Um, as you can see, and as the uh, people um, at home can see, it's getting a little bit dark in my room. <laughs> the night is falling. Um, thank you very much, Paz. I hope I can meet you someday in real life. Yeah, I hope so. Wonderful. Yeah. And good luck with all, all your projects and all your films. I'm looking forward to watch more of your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very Have much. a good night. You too. Bye.